we continue passing knowledge around that I got from Shane Lundy and Mutaz. So this actually, and particularly in this uh, series of videos, is on making API calls from Paul. So if we go here for interactive API for developers, and let's say that we pick here on health, metrics, let me pick the first one here. You know that you can try this out by just clicking on the button. And if we want to make an API call in Pulse that gets this data, all we need to do is, as we did before, we copy that uh, component. We go under Pulse and I actually open the REST API call uh, JSON that we downloaded in the first video. And let's say that I'm going to duplicate or clone and I search here for enable and say that you know this is the one I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to call these health metrics. And all I need to do here is paste that URL that we got from before and before we can even save it and, and define how we want to show it, we need to click here on, met, on uh, wrong query and here we get the same data that we got there. Let's see that now we want to save this in a tabular form and that's the one that is uh, actually put in and let's say I want all the columns. And if I click here, save, and save that, we go to the button in here. Well, actually, I should have changed the name. I, I left the, the original name enabled rule. Let's actually fix that. Make sure I'm not sloppy with that. And that thing, it's here. Uh, that's pretty sloppy. And um, if I save that now and I go back, I get the right title. Don't forget to change that title. It's actually on the bottom of the... So, and that is for API calls. And as you know, we did in the first video an example where we exercise the API calls from polls from advisor. Okay, and here's the documentation for it. There's another one that has a documentation, which is the use case manager in here. Unfortunately, when I was trying this, uh, the, and this is something worth mentioning, the results, at least for now, maybe Shane and Mutas had all the plans to expand this, but at least the results from now of uh, any call, an API call, has to come back uh, of course in a JSON format, but it has to be in the form of an array. If it's not an array, when you try to paste that URL and the, and the right property, uh, you're going to get an error message. Let me actually take one example of that. And here on the use case manager, and if I go, for example, let's try this one out, credential access. If I click here and the tool already has that, that information, but it's easier to go here. We see that this is the, uh, the tactic t uh, ID, TA, three zeros, and it's six, right? So, armed with that, I can just go into the documented API. Again, I go into the a uh, admin tab and click here, and I get that swagger for all the calls and let's say that I want to do return for example all the techniques for a particular tactic so let, that's that's the one I want to use and the, when I click here try out it allows me to put the tactic ID which we just saw that was uh, TA three zeros and a six and if I click here execute that runs well and this is the property name, credential access, right? Copy that. And what we will normally do is go here, select all these section, 
now we can close this one and we can go back to polls let me grab that JSON one that we downloaded and I'm gonna just click on the wheel to edit and I'm gonna you know maybe duplicate this one change the name here and when you paste this here and you put the property which is credential mapping credential access access rather and you click run query you get that message that it, it is not coming in the format of an array with those square brackets and that's why we cannot add that to, to at least now maybe Shane and Mutas have different plans for this uh, on, on Paul's calls. There's something else I want to share with you it's more kind of a hack but I ask uh, Mutas and Shane you know how you guys were able to do such a nice job with that QDI uh, if, I'll show it again if you did, didn't watch it well in video number one when we look at the QDI here there's no button for the documentation so how you figure out how those APIs are called if it's not document if they are not documented well, let me show you the hack that they did for this so I'm here on my QDI instance and when I hit the command option J I get this screen here and I need to click here and this is of course on a Mac on Chrome different operating system might be a different combination of keys but when I click here over network notice that as QDI is making all its call it's actually when you hover here you get that data that's how this for example console plugins is named uh, you know all these different so they they took a while and then look for the different things that uh, they were getting and that's how you get the same information if you were to again you can actually the best thing to do is to open this in a new tab and then grab the actual URL from here so basically what we did before which is you know grabbing not this one but uh, for the console and that's the name the the instance of my uh, my ID for the QDI then you you will be getting that data and this actually seems to be that's the property name count and this seems to come in the format of a, of a square bracket but again all these have to be in JSON format returning the results in the format of an array so the guy who wrote QDI certainly knows how to make you know very sophisticated AQL queries into the system and that's why he was able to build all these nice graphics but you can actually retrieve that and that's why what uh, Mutas and Shane used let me actually close this uh, screen let me go into the QDI dashboard I already modified in, in in the first video I didn't do it for all of them but uh, you know what I did there uh, in video number one is I changed this one so let's actually do it since I'm here let's actually go ahead and edit this one and change the machine which this was Mutas one 3503 is in mine if I click save here oh, I need to run it first in order to make sure that it's that it's okay uh, it didn't come with any data but at least it didn't give me any error so that you know uh, red icon uh, goes away so that's how he, they were able to get for example these QDI host status feed and all that data again it's a hack it's something that might be useful in case that you want to see how a particular uh, AQL query uh, works in 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 Curator you can actually grab that 
from that little trick on the browser debugging. So, in, in short, if you don't know how to make the AQL queries that the guy who created QDI knows so well, at least you know how to use the API calls even though they are not documented. Again, it is a hack. I think it's something for the advanced users who want to play with the system a little bit might be interested in knowing.